China is outpacing the United States by at least a decade. I think the denuclearization is a very, uh, it's a big aim, but Russia's willing to do it, and I think China's going to be willing to do it. Too. China and the United States are fundamentally not on the same level, and the two countries' nuclear policies are also completely different. So, Jonathan, let, let me get this straight. Is China ahead in nuclear power? It's not a competition. They're dominating us right now. While the world debates solar panels and wind turbines, China is quietly building something far more powerful and far less talked about. Nuclear power plants, or nuclear PPs for short. China's plans for nuclear power have dwarfed their existing 58 nuclear PPs, with 33 currently being erected and over 150 nuclear PPs slated for the coming decade. China has poised themselves to become the world's largest producer of nuclear power. Let's dive on into the top three reasons China has poised themselves for a nuclear power play. Kicking off the rankings, we have the country's widespread and chronic problem, smog. Smog is defined as a fog made heavier and darker by smoke and chemical fumes and is directly caused by China's extensive collection of coal-fired peepees. The burning of coal is so extensive that coal occupies half of China's rail capacity for transport and generates 62% of China's power. Chimneys from coal-fired peepees billow smoke into the atmosphere, which accumulates to form a massive dense cloud of pollution. The smog has created an estimated 6% decrease in China's GDP, with Chinese residents on Reddit posting, Does the air pollution bother you? The top comment states, Yes, it does. I can taste it when it gets above 100 in Beijing. There's a metallic taste in my mouth and it feels dry. Currently 24-7 in my part of the city. Yuck. There is no wind and the pollution can hang around for days or even weeks. With another popular comment stating, Over 150-ish makes me not want to go outside. Over 200 makes me not want to look outside. Now, you may be wondering, how does this relate to the Chinese nuclear expansion? Well, China is substituting their existing coal plants with nuclear plants. Here's why. The byproduct of coal plants are dense clouds of pollution or smog, while the byproduct of nuclear plants is superheated water vapor or steam, much more friendly for the environment and the lungs of the Chinese residents, which is exactly the goal of the president of China, Xi Jinping, who has been grappling with this issue since 2014. Chi says that the first thing he does every day is check the pollution levels. As you can tell, the president is very aware of the issue smog is presenting to China. Next up is China's ambition to achieve carbon neutrality by the year 2060. This goal is mammoth-sized, as China is currently the largest greenhouse gas polluter in the world. A Chinese energy chairman puts it to scale. China now has the largest amount of production of power. It's so much that it's doubling the size of the total power generation in the United States. It's not even close. China doubles US energy consumption and accounts for one third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, with the next up being Asia at one fifth. But China has laid out a plan to achieve net neutrality and a core component of said plan is, you guessed it, nuclear power. China plans to employ 400 gigawatts of nuclear power by 2060, which corresponds to about 400 nuclear PPs, as one nuclear PP generates about one gigawatt of power. Their aggressive expansion of nuclear PPs across the country is slated to produce about 18% of the country's electricity in the year 2060. China's plans also involve rapidly expanding all renewable energy sectors, but that deserves a dedicated video. Unfortunately, China hasn't reached its peak emissions yet, which is projected to be in the year 2030. But 
This is all according to plan, as Chinese President Xi Jinping outlines We aim to have CO2 emissions peak before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. And historically, China has been true to their word. With the president saying, word must be kept, promises must be delivered. Evidence of this can be seen from the 2009 Copenhagen summit, where China set a 2020 target on non-fossil fuel energy consumption to be 15% and entailed a 40 to 45% reduction of carbon intensity compared with 2005. In 2019, China smashed these targets at 15.3% and 48.1% respectively, proving China can easily carry out a plan spanning over a decade. As they say, history repeats itself, and if China hit their goals in 2019, chances are China will again in 2060. The number one reason behind China's nuclear power play is the Chinese objective to diversify their energy portfolio to strengthen the country's power security. Let me pick this statement apart. As I referenced earlier, China currently generates 62% of its energy from coal. And to achieve net neutrality by 2060, coal-fired PPs must go extinct in China. To fill the void, China is aggressively developing solar and wind, with deployments now all across China. Although solar and wind are great, they are vulnerable to large fluctuations of power from Mother Nature. Here's an example from YouTube that shows the variability of power output from a 100 watt solar panel. Day one, it was a perfectly sunny day, a total of 590 watt hours. The last day, day 10, it was cloudy and rainy. The panel produced just 50 watt hours. Here's a screenshot of each day's output if you want to pause it. As you saw, a lot of juice can be squeezed from solar on sunny days, but on cloudy days, solar's energy production can be as dry as a bone. Solar can't be a standalone power source for a country. Same with wind. They're just too unpredictable. Another component of China's energy mix is hydroelectric power. The Chinese are currently constructing the world's largest hydroelectric dam. The dam will bisect the Yarlung River in Tibet, and the corresponding hydroelectric plant is predicted to output three times more energy than the Three Gorges Dam, which is the current largest hydroelectric plant in the world. But, in the case of a drought, a hydroelectric PP would generate little to no power at all. And droughts are an annual occurrence in China, with the most recent drought occurring on May 15th, 2025. Droughts aren't a rare occurrence in China, which means China can't lean too heavily on hydroelectric power. These vulnerabilities aren't shared with nuclear power. No matter the conditions, nuclear PPs are going to generate a stable base load of power. China needs this base load to add an unbreakable foundation to their energy mix. And with all the new nuclear plants slated for construction, China is going to need a lot of fuel. But that won't be a problem. See, China has been trading consistently with their neighbor, Russia for the last two decades. And it just so happens Russia has a little known monopoly on enriched uranium, stockpiling about 40% of the concentrated elements and controlling four major enrichment facilities. Enriched uranium is key because uranium needs to be enriched before it can be used as nuclear fuel. No enrichment and uranium is useless in most situations. Therefore, China feels secure that it can import enriched uranium from Russia consistently. And that has been exactly the narrative. 
In 2024, China spent 849 million on enriched uranium from Russia, a 3.2 fold increase in the last year. China's relation to the monopoly controller, Russia, is the key. More keys, major key alert. Key factor behind China's whole nuclear power play. If the relationship wasn't solid, the foundation of nuclear energy in China would crumble. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in how Russia positioned themselves into having a monopoly on the world's enriched uranium, I'd love to make a video on that too. But until next time, you guys have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.